We've seen an increase in popularity in Star Wars comics and speculation recently, especially with Sabine Wren. We saw it with Ahsoka, but we keep hearing Star Wars buzz, and we're filming this on May the 4th, no doubt. But either way, question is, do you see any other Star Wars characters from the comics that were kind of under the radar that you might see another speculation buzz coming up? Tony, we'll start with you. Do you have any favorite characters you're looking at? You know, I, I think uh, one that's destined to hit the screen at some point in time, and maybe even in a full trilogy of, of feature films, is Darth Revan. Um, I think there's so much cult following behind him. A lot of people actually put him above Darth Vader in terms of Star Wars villains. Um, the, the world is already built between the games and, and various comics. Uh, it, there's so many, you know, there's, there's a, over a decade of, of Star Wars comics out there between uh, the stuff at Marvel, the stuff at uh, even IDW, Star Wars Adventures, the old Dark Horse stuff. There's so many characters. Um, but I think Darth Revan is a safe bet. Yeah, I agree. There's been some buzz on it, but I still think it's flying under the radar. So I think that's an awesome pick as well. But Adam, what about you? I, I noticed I... Just bought a 9-8 Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren off you. So that's one book I've talked about recently, so I was happy to get that from you. But either way, are there any characters you're looking at as well? Uh, so you guys know my obvious pick probably would have been Darth Revan. Um, knowing me, you know, I named my son Revan. So he's uh, one of my favorite characters. I love anything from the Knights of the Old Republic. Um, and I really think that the Star Wars fan base has shown um, – Disney and everybody else that they're kind of done with the Skywalker whole saga um, feel for now. And they're really moving towards those lesser known characters or even new characters, the Mandalorian, Baby Yoda. Yeah, because really just today they announced, um, I'm not going to kill his name, Taiki, you know, uh, well, director yeah. of Thor, he's yeah. going to direct a new Star Wars movie. Yeah. And so I really, I, I, I'm going with the, the Sith Lord theme as well. Um, go, but going back, I really think people are going to be interested once they, especially if they start going down that Darth Revan road, you have guys like Darth Bane, you got Marco Ragnos, Frida Nand. I mean, you have the whole um, Sith history, which is super, super rich. They could do whatever they wanted. I think um, a long time ago when Lucas, or no, it was actually Disney, right, who decanonized everything. Uh, I really think that opened up a lot of possibilities for them to do whatever they wanted. And then they have a wealth of things to pull from. Knights of the Old Republic set it up. Star Wars, the Old Republic, the online version set it up. You have a ton of stuff even going back to like Darth Vader's uh, Apprentice and all those things. So I think if any any of those Sith Lords, especially those older ones, um, any characters from Knights of the Old Republic, uh, I, I think are a safe bet. I think with Star Wars speculation not being... Um, really comfortable for a lot of people you can take advantage of those really low prices right now and you see as soon as as soon as anybody's mentioned those things spike 50 60 70 dollars plus for a raw copy um and they're, and they're for sale for usually that 20 to 30 dollar range to begin with so now is definitely the time to jump on board let me ask you also because we've heard this name and we've seen this comic and people are aware of these books and they still pick them up but what do you think of the character thrawn thrawn um I, it's just it's just so hard to say specifically with anybody right now where they're going to yeah. go with it. I really feel like I feel like this is kind of must, what it almost felt like when they were starting to build that Marvel Cinematic Universe. You know, what I mean, you you really had no. I mean, you kind of had an idea of the direction, but it was all up in the air. Any any pick could have been a good pick, but right now, before everything starts going, I would jump on anything you can to so even include stuff with uh, Kylo Ren. I really feel like Kylo Ren. Um, I enjoyed his character. I think it'd be cool to see even a mini series or something else come out of it to to see those kind of in between moments between the trilogies or the, that later trilogy, you know. So, um, but I, I'm I'm going anything Knights of the Old Republic related, um, especially Sith Lords. I think are a safe bet right now. Jack, yeah, I got totally piggyback. I think these guys are right on the Sith Lords. Whether we're talking Darth Raven or. Um, uh, you know, Cade Bane or Darth Nihilus, um, who I think is another one um, who is starting to get people's attention, but I, I think it's a solid bet. Now there's some other obvious ones of some characters we've talked about. Um, characters like uh, Dr. Afra, who I think is getting a lot of attention already. It seems to be bound to hit Disney plus and no matter how much attention she's gotten already, it hasn't hit the potential that the character overall has. Um, I think that Admiral Thrawn is a good one. Rose Tico is another interesting one who we previously saw, but um, 
her first appearance is in that IDW series that Tony mentioned. So you're talking about a kind of a tougher find. But the one I really like is actually my man, uh, and if I don't mention him, he's going to freak out, Mighty Mel V. Uh, his favorite pick, um, it, which is the, the Star Wars classic uh, from the Dark Horse, number seven, uh, which features the birth and first appearance of Boba Fett's daughter. Um, I think everybody is looking for uh, Boba Fett to, sh in some form, his presence in the Mandalorian. And while I think that Mandalorian has changed the game for comic, uh, Star Wars comic spec, that's still kind of the flagship brand. So I really like things that really surround the Mandalorian. And the evidence of that has been the Sabine Wren stuff and the way that that's taken off. Um, just on speculation surrounding that show. Now, I still think the Star Wars Volume 1, number 41, the first appearance of Yoda, who without Yoda, we still don't know Baby Yoda, the whole kind of concept of that. So I still look at Star Some Wars. Force sperm. Number, I still look at, we don't know if that's a child. We don't know if that's, you know, that's, that's his child. We don't know what the story behind that is, if it's just another member of that race. So either way, I look at the first appearance of Yoda and I say, this is a, a classic key appearance that's really a $5 book and is that's tragic. In general, though, I don't think you can go wrong. I'm really bullish on Star Wars speculation in general. I think Adam's right. We're at the, the tip of the iceberg. These prices, the price, it doesn't matter any of these characters we're talking about, whether it's, it's Darth Raven or Admiral Thrawn or Dr. Alfred, these prices are not what Marvel and DC first appearance prices go for. Yeah, I like your pick. Well, not your pick. Your pick about Mel's pick about Boa Fett's daughter. I just don't like that book that you referenced because I think a hologram and a baby are bad picks. I've said it on here before. I hate baby spec, but like, oh, look back at that, whatever those Spider-Man books were, where it was so such as a baby. Nope, I'm always about when the character starts to be who they're supposed to be. And for that reason alone, with Mel's pick, I tend to like that Star Wars blood ties Boba Fett is dead. Number two better, where it's got Boba Fett on on the, I'm not going to misname the animal, but so I picked up a couple copies of that after Mel talked about it on the show. But for me, the character that I like, and I've talked about briefly, um, I won't say it's good spec, but it's something that I like, especially with the popularity of that whole Jedi Fallen Order video game. A lot of people have been playing about, especially with today, with May the 4th, they got new content coming out. I say today, we recorded this the night before it airs. But I actually like that Trilla Sidori, that second sister Inquisitor, the main villain of that game. Um, cheap, super cheap right now, created by a comic book author and Charles Sewell and Giuseppe Camincoli. So you can find it, first appearance in that Darth Vader number 19, but Jedi Fallen Order Dark Temple, the one that, that series that's based on that game, issue number five had a one in 10 variant with her right there on the cover with her badass lightsaber and freaking full on Darth Vader Inquisitor looking costume. The only problem is in the game, she gets killed by Darth Vader. So I still love the character and you never know what they might do with any of these spinoffs or I know Kathleen Kennedy says they don't have the material to create a bunch of movies, but they got everyone else knows just books, novels, everything. So you even know about this character. And I picked these books up super cheap just because I love the character and I love that video game. We might be able to take advantage of a, a spike in that. I mean, what you see with even a lot of the one-off Marvel villains, if you if you get it ahead of time, everybody jumps on that that train and, and you, you get spike if you're trying to turn something or flip something over like that. Especially when you got a badass female villain, right? You don't see yeah. that too often. Captain Phasma, that's why I like Phasma. I think yeah, that she's a waste they, of a character. But if they go into her, if at yeah. some point yeah. they do something where they explain at all who she is or how she came to be, we don't know anything about her. Yeah. Um, if they go into her backstory, that, uh, that Poe Dameron 2 could mm -hmm. be a sneaky, sneaky book. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see him do something with the uh, the Gray Jedi Order as well. The the Gray Jedi, I know that's a that's a pretty big fan favorite as well of of everybody who knows a bit more about the Star Wars universe. Um, that'd be really cool to see. You can go in a lot of different directions with that as well. I think there's a lot of characters that a lot of things that were done sloppily in the trilogy that they might try to revisit. And I, I, like like Phasma, like Captain Phasma. I mean, because you got a lady in a giant shiny stormtrooper outfit and you have no idea why, and then she just suddenly dies. You know, people want to know more. So. <laughs> And she Tony, sold merchandise. Yeah. Tony, sold you were going to say something also? I was just going to say, I think a couple things about Star Wars that, that are big 
Uh, you know, we've had Mandalorian so far, and with the just insane success of that, I think in a, in another year and a half, we're going to see a slate of Star Wars Disney Plus shows, this mm -hmm. like we've seen on with Marvel. So there's going to be a lot, you know, regardless of what Kathleen Kennedy is saying, there's going to be a lot of stuff out there. And, you know, hopefully some of it is Old Republic and the, the, the kind of thing that longtime fans have been looking for. But I do think a lot of what they're going to pull from in the beginning is from these uh, younger age shows, from, from the course. Course, Clone Wars. You know, so there's a whole generation of kids who already grew up with this. They know who Ahsoka is. So when she's cast in Mandalorian, that's instant name recognition. Mm -hmm. So looking at Clone Wars, looking at Disney Infinity, look at all the characters who were in Disney Infinity, uh, or even those Star Wars adventures. I think yeah. they're definitely going to want to stay young, you know, and, and not just service the older fan base. Yeah, and I'll just have you know, before we started recording this, I mean, Adam totally changed his pick because he told me he was going heavy on Jar Jar Binks. Oh, that's not okay. tell people that, man. That's, that's, that's our secret, you know? <laughs> you should need a help with this a comic book. <laughs> I said that in confidence, man. You can't be telling everybody. <laughs> Star Wars number eight, the first Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, I, I, still, I still think uh, picking up Ahsoka's um, first appearance, if you can afford it, I know it's like around a $250, $300 raw book, but I don't think that's seen nearly the, yeah. the limit it's going to. I think it's going to be like an ultimate Fallout 4, even like the uh, Edge of Spider-Verse 2 comic book. I, I think there's going to be a lot of room to grow. Uh, and especially with the limited runs they have in these these comic books, it's going to be one. If you can get it now, definitely get it now because it's going to keep going up. Yeah, I think the trifecta right now would be Ahsoka, Sabine Wren, and, of course, Afra. Those those three mm -hmm. for books are definitely ones people are buying up. 